Pero alam ko, malapit na mag yung mga yan. Alright? Kasi yung kulto nila, ay sorry, yung amo nila, ay sorry, yung ano nila, yung uh, hero nila, nako, hindi lang isa sa hero nila, baka ilan pang mga pektuan dito, di ba? So, eto na guys, ha? eto na, this is it. This is for real, guys. Okay, this is for real. So as I discussed earlier, my visit recently to The Hague confirmed to me that the ICC is reaching out already and trying to get cooperation on the part of the Philippine government. Meaning, mukhang handa na yung mga documentos, mga ebidensya, the basic ingredients essentially are there for them to move to the next step, which is Yes, issuing warrants of arrest. Now, obviously, mom, yung mga ibang officials natin, whether it's DFA, whether it's our representatives, diplomatic representatives, but now you have no less than first, Menardo Guevara, the Solicitor General right now, and the previous uh, Department of Justice Secretary under Duterte, and the current DOJ Secretary, uh, Ramulia, confirming that if ever magpupush ng International Criminal Court, for warrants of arrest, they're not gonna stand in their way. And the reasoning that they provide is almost exactly what we have been saying for a very, very long time, which is the Philippines cannot talk about a rules-based international order, so West Philippine Sea. We cannot talk about international law, so West Philippine Sea. We cannot talk about arbitrary tribunal award of 2016 in the West Philippine Sea. We cannot talk about additional arbitration cases against China to uphold the Philippine sovereign rights. We cannot talk about, talk about even the legitimacy of our sovereign rights in the West Philippine Sea and then go on and ignore international law when it doesn't serve the political uh, interests of certain powers that be. It doesn't work that way. Yes, ibang iba ang ICC sa on clause related arbitration bodies like the article 287 annex 71 uh, that gave and affirmed essentially our rights uh, west philippine in 2016 but nevertheless all of these international bodies are representations and manifestations of international law in fact if you go to the hague and i, I discussed that dunsa for instance watching vlog interview call with uh, ambassador malaya about this if you look at the hague and yung Troika, and yung International Court of Justice, and yung International Criminal Court, and yung PCA. In fact, there are a number of other courts also ha that have to do with international trade, that have to do also with uh, specific court cases involving different, uh, you know, uh, rival states, among other things. But there is the Troika of ICG, uh, ICJ, ICC, and, 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 and of course, uh, PCA. If you look at all of them, they're all collectively a manifestation of a rules-based international order. Basically, the idea dyan is, hindi na tayo babalik sana sa First World War or Second World War, right? Kaya nga naiinis ako dun sa mga sinisabi ni iba na parang, what? Na parang, eh, yun na nangyari sa Second World War. So kung sinugod ng civilian mo, okay lang bumbay mo yung buong city nila. I-dress din natin yung mga countries na yan, whatever. Kaya nga we came with international law precisely to avoid what all the crazy situations that were happening, not only during First and Second World War, but for centuries and thousands of years before that. We want to get out of the jungle. Well, uh, might is right. We want to get out of that world. Kaya nga tayo may international law. So now it's interesting that you're hearing almost the same argument being echoed by Filipino top officials. All right. This is what Justice Secretary Jesus Crispin Ramulla said. We are not in the business of blocking any movement of the Interpol unless a policy is laid out which, of course, will go against our international commitments. All right? Which will go against our international commitments. So, ibig sabihin, nare-recognize, now, officially nare-recognize, guys, nare-recognize ng ating gobyerno na you cannot play pick and choose. You know, you cannot be selective and say, oh, so on clause, 
we're law abiding, we're a bastion of rule of law, we fight for international rules based rules based order. And then pagdating sa human rights, etc. dahil ayun mo taman yung isang pamilya, or dahil kunyara may unity, or takot ka lang na magkakaroon ng open civil war or something like that, then ay hindi na independe yan. So now you see a significant adjustment in the strategy of the Philippine government, right? Or, I won't say strategy, at least the but rhetoric of the Philippine government. So you want, you went from from Marcos openly lambasting essentially ICC and saying ICC has no jurisdiction whatsoever, essentially regurgitating all of the nonsensical DDS argument, right? To now saying, ay, pero kung ano sila, wala tayong mga gawa dyan. Sorry na lang. Ganyan talaga, di ba? And then suddenly, there's even more to that, saying that, well, Kasi kung may gagawin pa tayo, this will go against our international commitments. That for me, that for me is, is key. Yari talaga yung mga, ano yun, yung mga mapektuhan dyan. At alam na alam nila. Alam na alam nila yung implication nito. So, just to be clear, earlier, eto naman yung sinabi ni Menardo Guevara, who was the Justice Secretary of Digong, who for years insisted against facts, against principles, against reason, against morality and everything, na dapat walang pakihang ICC dito, blah, 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 and all of that. Pero sabi niya, the Philippine government cannot stop uh, you know, the ICC prosecutor, Karim Khan, from proceeding uh, any way he wants. Ibig sabihin, there's an effective recognition of their jurisdiction. Because let's be honest, kung ayaw naman talaga mag-cooperate ng Philippine government and they're willing to pay the diplomatic price, let's say, Russia, right? Si Putin, na issue ng warrant of arrest. Russia said, I don't care. Forget about it. Russia even, you know, Putin even went to India and Vietnam. He said, I don't care about it. And they got away with it because the whole government insisted on that and their power. We know that the uh, ICC also is potentially pushing for warrants of arrest against some leaders in Israel. But so far, so you can see that here, this argument of the Philippines na wala tayong manggagawa is not necessarily valid because we see with other countries actually when the governments insist that they're not going to cooperate, they, they can get away with it. Now, in the case of the Philippines, an argument here is that if we do that, there's going to be costs. And that's quite interesting coming from former Justice Secretary of Digong, who's now the Solicitor General, and essentially also the current Justice Secretary. So, ang sinabi ni Guevara is once an arrest warrant is issu issued, it's in the Interpol's job to serve it. Under the Interpol, we're an adjunct of the Interpol. Ibig sabihin, susunod lang tayo sa kanila. Alright? <laughs> susunod lang tayo sa kanila. Uh, sorry, this is actually Remulia. And I am kay Remulia, uh, that scenario is what we need to discuss as a legal group within the government, but most of the time, 99% of the time, we respect the actions of the Interpol, 99% of the time. So he didn't specify if this will fall under 1% or not. So, yung mga, ano natin dyan, kaibigan natin dyan, na pinagtatawanan tayo, so, eh, nag-exaggerate tayo, pinagtatawanan si, si, uh, si Trillian, so, sa Trilling ba ang tawag nila? Sinabi nila na mga purong ek-ek lang sinasabi, eto na, eto na guys, eto na. Openly, sinasabi ng Philippine government. Okay, kung gusto nila, go ahead kayo. At hindi pwede na ano kami. Kasi kung <laughs> umalma kami, may cost yan sa Philippines. And as we explained, talaga may cost yan sa Philippines. May cost yan kay BBM because it's a crazy situation where B BBM is taking the punches for digong. And Marcos is not going to help the country's reputation in terms of rule of law, in terms of being a rules-based uh, nation. And at the same time, this is going to also cost us on UNCLOS. This is going to cost us on West Philippine Sea because you cannot expect the world to support you when it comes to rules-based international order when you yourself do not uh, support or respect international organizations or legal bodies. So this is the importance of yung pinag-usapan natin, guys, ito. So ito na talaga. It's out there. Finally, na-confirm what we have been saying for more than a year. Go to, back to my analysis of ICC one year ago. Sinisabi ko na ito. Ito na talaga mangyari. Right. Ang, ang hindi ko lang masabi is kailan may issue essentially itong warrant of arrest na yan. But it looks like we're getting there and probably behind the scenes some negotiations are already happening about that. Which is why guys, my saisai, right? Or dapat intindihin niyo bakit nagpa-panic mode yung iba diyan na natatanggalan sila ng security. Or bakit naiinis yung iba diyan dahil nirereshuffle na yung mga officials, mga police. Uh, John sa Davao, di ba? You can clearly see. And then now, nakita natin, even yung uh, dating sidekick ni Digong, alright? Uh, na ngayon, biglang, 
galit na galit sa feel health. Biglang ngayon, concern na concern sa ana. Tapos, <coughs> gusto ko sa <coughs> formali. <coughs> um, yan, pati siya, nagtanggalan ng security detail. Si si Madam naman, si si Madam Sarap Buhay, uh, meron, marahin, mar- meron pa rin naman siya, malaki pa rin yung security. No? Sabi nga ni, nung isa, ta- three times more than ano pa rin, kay Lenny daw. But nevertheless, hindi na siya batalyon katulad ng dati. Kaya nag-drama-drama na kailan daw nila ng protections, whatever. So, again, connect the dots here. If the government is saying, we're okay with Interpol coming in, wala tayong gagawa, and at the same time, natatanggalan ng batalyon ng iba or natatanggalan ng security ng iba, you can connect the dots. ba? And ang question dito is, will they strike back? What's gonna happen? So, guys, we're, we're, we're getting there. And yung iba nga, nag- openly, nagpa-panic mode na. Alright? So, for instance, if you go to... Ito, 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 ito. Si... Ayan, huli ka, ano. Um, ito si Bato School of, ano, drama. Drama and Arts. Diba? Tignan mo si, si Bato School of Drama and Arts. Oh, drama, drama na siya ngayon. He, fe- he feels betrayed daw. Kawawa naman siya. Kawawa naman siya. Siya pa ang victim ngayon. Akalain mo, si Bato pa ang victim ngayon. Siya pa yung kawawa. Oh, ito sabi ni Bato, ah. Sabi niya. He's willing naman to face ICC ngayon bigla. But only if it involves being interviewed and nothing else. Ayan na. Ayan na. Nasa face na siya ng negotiation. Ayan na. Medyo tanggap niya na na mukhang ito na talaga. Mangyayari na ito. Pero ngayon bigla, hindi na okay lang man ako sa ICC. Okay naman ako sa ICC. Pero sana interview lang. Ano na. Wag, wag na. Wag na akong nanin. Okay. Kung makipag-communicate sila sa akin, walang problema. Kung gusto nila mag-interview, they can interview me anytime. Mag-interview lang sila, pero it doesn't mean na yumuyo ka ako sa kanilang jurisdiction. Ayan. So, tanggap niya na may jurisdiction na itong ICC na ito, sabi na. So, in, in, so in, 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 in American, ano sabi ni, ano, ni Robin Hood, ni ano, boy Seal, di naman tayo ka, no, ba tayo mag-English, di ba? Oh, talaga. <laughs> eh, talaga. Ay, nako, school, ano talaga mga, ano. If they communicate, it, if they communicate with me, there's no problem. If they want an interview, they can interview me anytime. But that doesn't mean that I bow to their jurisdiction. Oh, <laughs> so tanggap mo my jurisdiction sila. You should have said something else. It's like, I don't bow to international institutions. I don't bow to foreign bodies. Or I don't bow to whatever. Pero hindi, parang tinanggap nila my jurisdiction sila. Ako, gusto ko lang na, eh kung uh, gusto nila mag-usap, sasagutin ko ang mga tanong nila. Pero it doesn't mean na nire-regress ko ng kanilang jurisdiction. Ah, in fairness naman. Nire-regress? What do you mean nire-regress? Nire-recognize, you mean? Nire-regress? I'm regress? Oh, maybe this is a technical term. I don't know. But the term is more like recognition. All right. But anyway, hindi yan ang term na cooperation. Kwan lang. I just want to show amity or pagiging isang normal na individual, individual na kung magtanong, ay hindi tayo bastos na sumagot. Sasagutin ko ba? It doesn't mean I recognize their jurisdiction over me. Okay, okay. So, wala na. Nasa phase ng ano na ito. Nasa negotiation phase na itong isang to. At least medyo nasa next step na siya. Medyo may pag-asa pa ito. Medyo mukhang tanggap niya na yung direction of the wind. Alright? Direction of the wind. So, for me talaga, the question at this point in time is, is the warrant of arrest gonna come before elections? Is it gonna come right when the certificates of candidates are gonna be filed? Is this gonna come way into the election season or maybe they'll wait after the election season because as I said it depends eh. if it's very close to elections or during election period baka maging pa victim pa yung iba baka lalo mag drama yung iba at let's be honest hindi natin alam how is this gonna work it might create a sympathy effect for the DDS camp it might make them look weak and uh, so it might look th- make them look weak and marginalized at baka lalo silang mahirapan sa election but it could also backfire and make them look like uh, paawa effect, gano'n, tapos biglang matanda na si tatay, tapos yung iba, biglang nag-wheelchair na, yung iba may nag na, yung mga gano'n, alam niyo na yung mga drama na yung gano'n, diba? So, for me, the timing matters. Siguro, uh, for the government, better just do it after the midterms na lang, para sigurado na, na ano. But then again, then again, it's not the Philippine government that chooses the time. It's the ICC that chooses the time. It's their priority. But the Philippine government can dribble this. Pwede naman i-dribble ng Philippine government yan eh. Because katulad ng interview natin with uh, with uh, Attorney Carranza, who I think has had the sharpest and the most accurate prognostications. 
about ICC, ICJ, if you look at our interviews. I think he was right to say na ICC rin, medyo politically savvy din sila, especially ito si Khan. Alright? Hindi siya yung basta-basta na mag issue lang ng ganun. So maraming considerations uh, that are part, na, na, na in-input nila bago they make any big, big decisions. But nevertheless, nevertheless, it's quite important to see one of these big DDS guys, the guy on the front line of yung, a, a bloody horrible catastrophic drug war that didn't catch a single real big fish. Hindi yung mga small-time warlords lang i-rendered kung saan na hindi natin alam kung saan talaga sa map, di ba? Yung real, kahit isa wala, nahuli. nahuli. So talagang scam yun. Scam yun. And more than scam, it's a human rights catastrophe na talaga naapektuhan yung bansa natin. So yung isang tao na yan, nasa negotiation phase na siya. Medyo tanggap na na yung direction. Yung iba, I think they're still coming to terms at gusto nila lang i-weaponize kung ano yung issue, well, feel health, corruption, whatever, uh, just to distract, but nevertheless. And then yung isa naman, sharap buhay, nagwawala lang. Nagwawala lang. So, we are an interesting phase in Philippine politics. And as I said, bigla pwedeng gumising tayo and dyan na yung ICC warrant of arrest. And then, <laughs> and then comes the Mexican standoff. And then comes the Me- Mexican standoff. And, uh, yeah, Let's see where it goes from there. On that note, thank you very much, mga kameta. Sorry, medyo late ako nag But tomorrow, we're hoping to have uh, another set of interviews and conversations. We're hoping to have representatives from uh, from Akbay, ito mga youth na ito, si Gio at si Paeng. Let's talk about progressive politics. Let's talk about Riza Antiveros. Let's talk about things na siguro hindi na pag-usapan masyado or masinsinan dun sa mga ibang platforms and all. Let's talk about those things. So, I hope you guys join us tomorrow. Medyo late din tayo mag-start, but... But I hope nevertheless you join uh, us and appreciate what we're doing. Again, once again, thank you so much a lot ng bigay ng support us, stickers, comments, stars, whatever. Because these are the things that give us momentum. These are the things that give us uh, the kind of basic resources. But most important, the inspiration to level up and professionalize etong podcast natin. Don't worry, we'll still have this kind of spontaneous pangpatawa, yung mga ganang. Kasi ang dami nagreklamo, sir. Ang ganda ng discussion. Kaso... Tawa lang ako ng tawa. Hindi ko, na, <laughs> ko nakasalanan yan. And I hope people understand when we do this, uh, w- you know, of course I can be 100% serious and lecture type. But you want to reach out to as many people as possible. At alam natin pagdating sa kultura natin, people like humor, people like engagement. So sometimes we have to make adjustments here. Siguro minsan na nasusobran yung tawanan and all. But do not forget, we're doing what Socrates was saying. Seduce people into truth. So truth should be packaged properly with a little bit of humor, maybe dark humor, with a little bit of laughter, with a little bit of, uh, uh, you know, mga antics and gimmicks there. But at the end of the day, if we transmit the sensibility and critical thinking, then success will tayo. On that note, thank you very much. God bless and uh, talk to you soon. And please continue to support us and subscribe to us, especially on YouTube, para makamit natin yung minimum uh, na threshold, para ma uh, blue check na natin ito, para legit na tayo. And of course, also dun sa Spotify natin, Deep dive with Richard Hidarian. Libre lang naman magbigay ng five stars if you think we deserve it. And also to share, comment, and subscribe. Thank God. Thank you guys also for your support. Mabuhay ang Pilipinas. And 